Tory titan Michael Gove says high levels of UK migration put a strain on demand for housing. Well day. Whose fault might that be, Michael? Britain needs to train more brickies or forever rely on foreign workers. After being in power for 13 years, and after five Tory prime ministers of all shapes and sizes, nobody could say the Conservatives haven't had every opportunity to reshape the country in their image. Yet next week official figures for net migration will be released and are certain to be an eye-watering record high possibly not much under the 1 million mark. The government's housing target that euphemism for a meaningless, empty promises to build 300,000 homes a year. And guess what? It is not currently meeting that target. The target itself is built on the assumption that net migration the difference between the number of people leaving and arriving in the UK is around 170,000 a year. The figure some experts predict for next week is 997,000 more than double the pre-Brexit record. And these people are not getting out of leaky dinghies. Britain has always been a country that has benefited from people of talent arriving here and people fleeing persecution, Gove told this week's National Conservatism UK conference in London. But the numbers recently have been at a level where there is an inevitable pressure on housing and public services. Oh, Govey, baby whose fault is that? These Tories are so totally, spectacularly removed from real life that it never even crosses their Oxbridge-educated minds that we desperately need to boost apprenticeships to reduce the need to import workers. The small boats have attained a symbolic significance. Can Rishi stop them, or not? But next week's statistics for legal migration should be an infinitely bigger deal in the public consciousness. It is of far greater significance to our national life that skilled workers come here legally to do the jobs we are too clueless to do ourselves. Immigration is a good thing when the newcomer brings something to our workforce that is missing. But everyone who arrives needs somewhere to live, health care for themselves and their family, education for their children. It is bonkers for the government to be relaxing migration rules for skilled craftsmen when our own people should possess these skills. And out-of-touch Tories like Michael Gove give no sign that they understand the fundamental reason for the astonishing levels of immigration. Our own youngsters are not being coached for the skilled work that would give them a job for life. Building bosses say that there are just 70,000 working bricklayers in the country an astonishing figure in a country of 67 million. Demand for brickies is off the charts. Some are earning more than £125,000 a year, placing them in the top tax bracket. Think about it brickies paying the same rate of tax as Premier League footballers. Downing Street is relaxing visa rules for foreign builders. They have no choice or else there will be nobody to build all these new homes they keep promising. But why can't we train young Brits to be bricklayers and electricians, plumbers, plasterers, carpenters, and roofers? Since the Tony Blair years the emphasis has been on packing every youngster off to university as though it is Glastonbury so they can accumulate pound 27,000 plus of debt and some Minnie Mouse degree that is worthless in the working world. Would things only get better under Sir Softy? No Donald Duck university degrees for all is a labour invention. There has been a lot of debate in recent days about Brexit and if it has succeeded or failed. But if we can't train our youngsters to be carpenters, brickies, roofers, electricians, plasterers, and plumbers, then it doesn't matter a damn if we are inside or outside the European Union. We will always need to import skilled workers from foreign shores. Even when they number one million every year. The Titanic continues to grip our collective consciousness. For the first time the most famous shipwreck in history has been subjected to a full-sized digital scan, created by the latest tech in deep-sea mapping. In the past, submersibles with low-resolution cameras revealed only tiny glimpses of the Titanic, which lies 3,800 meters down in the Atlantic. But the 700,000 images taken by Magellan LTD, a deep-sea mapping company, reveal the wreck in its entirety for the first time. The 3D reconstruction is so precise you can see unopened bottles of champagne and the shoes of the dead. Titanic will never be raised after resting on the seabed since 1912, it would fall apart. In time, it will disappear entirely. So these new images are the closest we will ever get to seeing the wreck. 
It is incredible stuff although I don't buy the line that these new images mean the Titanic will at last give up its secrets. Don't we already know what happened? The Titanic hit an iceberg on its maiden voyage in 1912. Out of the 2,223 passengers and crew, only 706 survived, mostly women and children, and mostly from first and second class. These new images are jaw-dropping. But the Titanic does not capture our imagination because there is real mystery about how its maiden voyage ended. We know the Titanic represented the cutting-edge technology of its day. We know there were not enough lifeboats because it was believed they would never be needed. We know Kate Winslet had no space for poor Leonardo DiCaprio on her floating door. The reason we still care about the Titanic is because the unsinkable ship demonstrates how men make plans. And God laughs. Some suggest that becoming a dad for the seventh time at the age of 79 will be Robert De Niro's most difficult role. I had a few achievements in my life but being married to the girl in the Victoria's Secret window is surely my finest, he sighs. Abby Clancy poses in a range of sporty pants for Victoria's Secret and her husband Peter Crouch almost purrs with pride. I had a few achievements in my life but being married to the girl in the Victoria's Secret window is surely my finest, he sighs. Yes, being married to Abby has to be up there with Crouchy's legendary robot dance. England could go for a foreigner as manager after Gareth Southgate says John McDermott, FA technical director. As we learned in Manchester on Wednesday night, the greatest football manager in the world is a Catalan. Pep Guardiola would be a great England boss. But nothing sums up the agony and the ecstasy of our national team like the mim of manager Southgate, circa Waistcoat World Cup 2018, consoling the player Southgate, circa Grey Shirt Euros 1996 penalty cock up. No manager will ever have England in his DNA like Gareth Southgate.